Welcome everybody. Our today's topic is an application of AI in drug discovery, namely graph neural networks for binding affinity prediction. And today we're going to cover a number of topics. Binding affinity, what is virtual screening, how to parameterize ligand and receptor, what is graph neural networks, and how to perform drug target affinity prediction using graph neural networks. First of all, I would like to highlight that the topic we are going to discuss relates to early drug discovery stages. They are highlighted here in red. And the result of application of a technology is a shortage of a time and cost of these stages about a half. To the left, you can see the estrogen receptor bound to the DNA, and it's a receptor. And to the right, you see the active center of this protein and connected with the two ligands, namely estradiol, you see it in green, and tamoxifen. Binding affinity is the strength of the binding interaction between a biomolecule, estradiol or tamoxifen, and estrogen receptor. And binding affinity is typically measured and reported by the equilibrium inhibition constant, or KI, which is used to evaluate and rank the strength of biomolecular interaction. So the, the smaller this KI is, the greater the binding affinity of the ligand to its target. It means the stronger estradiol or tamoxifen is connected to this receptor. So uh, why the binding affinity is important? The binding affinity defines the therapeutic effect of a drug. Uh, you know that the tamoxifen is a drug which inhibits estrogen receptor and is, in, is used in number of anti-cancer therapies. So in drug discovery, binding affinity is used to rank hits binding to the target and design drugs that bind their target selectively. Selectively means the drug must have a high affinity to the selected target and the lowest possible affinities to other targets to avoid off-target binding and caused by these side effects. So binding affinity is measured experimentally and there are a variety of methods for that, uh, such as uh, ELISA, gel shift assays, pull down assays and others. But they are expensive in terms of time, costs and human efforts. So computational methods are used to sh shorten, to cut this time and uh, efforts, and uh, narrowing a set of a compounds for experimental verification. This set of computational methods of predicting uh, and uh, computing binding affinities is called virtual screening. So let's give a definition and a brief classification for the concept of virtual screening. Virtual screening is a set of computational techniques for the selection of molecules that are most likely to bind to a drug target. The drug target is typically protein or polynucleotide. And there are two main branches of virtual screening, ligand-based and structure-based. On these pictures, you can see the two kinds of ligand-based virtual screening. In the first case, the structure of a host is known. Based on this information, the pharmacophore is built. The interactions between the ligand and the binding site are analyzed. Chemical features are placed on the ligand where these interactions take place. You see these places in yellow. For the final pharmacophore model, just the information of the location and type of chemical features is retained. Steric constrictions can be implemented by adding a ligand shape or exclusion volumes to the model. Chemical features in this figure are color-coded. Hydrophobic, yellow, hydrogen bone acceptor, uh, red, 
and the shape shape of the molecule of the pharmacophore is, is in gray. To the right, you can see a ligand-based pharmacophore model generation. So training compounds are selected based on their potent activity, selectivity, and low conformational flexibility. Chemical features from the example are color-coded. Hydrogen bond acceptor is in green. Hydrogen bond donor is in magenta and hydrophobic cyan and the shape is in gray. Let's talk about the second type of virtual screening, namely structure-based virtual screening. In this case, the 3D model and uh, Cartesian coordinates of a receptor is known. We are selecting and changing the ligand structure so that the binding force or the affinity will be maximal of all possible uh, choices. Recently, our group tried to separate known from being active and inactive ligands using all these methods, and uh, we failed. Uh, you, you can see the experimental results on this picture, and uh, ligands with a uh, high Ki which are bad uh, binders, uh, they are in uh, blue. And uh, the best Ki, means low inhibition constant, are in red. Uh, and we can conclude that there is no um, reliable separation of these ligands based on uh, conventional uh, virtual screening methods. So it means we need something new uh, to distinguish between active and inactive compounds to a particular receptor. So within the context, uh, the proposed AI technique is classified as a kind of virtual screening, but uh, comparatively new and uh, more efficient in terms of uh, required resources, prediction time, and accuracy. But it requires uh, some specific types of uh, parameterization of ligands and receptors. And uh, let's overview them. So first, uh, this is an example of a ligand parameterization. And since we are going to use graph neural networks, we have to represent the ligand and the receptor as graphs. And here you can see a molecule of a, a trichloromethane, which is uh, parameterized as a graph. You can see these icons of uh, vectors, and you can see that, that each atom and each bond is represented as a vector with some particular features, the tension mechanism. Um, it is a recursive construct which uh, iteratively learns intramolecular effects. So uh, each molecule is uh, represented as an undirected graph, sometimes it is directed, containing nodes or atom features and edges or bonds features. A CH3 group uh, is in uh, blue, and we can see that the uh, number of neighbors, hydrogens, and a formal charge, so it's a features, uh, which is uh, stated for this uh, group of atoms, and the same for other groups. You can see that they are different in terms of values of features, and you can see that the same holds true for uh, bonds. Uh, here we can see that each bond is uh, classified as aromatic, uh, conjugated, uh, whether it's a part of a ring, and to what atoms this uh, bond connects. As a result, we have a matrix which represents all the bonds and uh, all the atoms of a molecule. Now let's discuss receptor parameterization. Receptors are typically large biomolecules polynucleotides or proteins. The most common receptor parameterization techniques for graph neural networks is creating an adjacency matrix. Let's review some of them. So uh, interatomic or interamino acid or internucleic acid distances matrix is constructed from the Cartesian atomic coordinates. In these matrices, the rows and columns are assigned to the nodes in the network and the presence of an edge is symbolized by a numerical value, 
other than zero. We have a bond from A to B, A to B, but we have the same mirrored B, B to A connection, B to A. In this way, uh, there is, we, we cannot define the direction uh, of, a, of an edge, and in this way the graph is uh, undirected, but we clearly see all the connections from the nodes to nodes. Another kind of adjacency matrix is directed, and it's simply uh, not mirrored to a main diagonal. We can see that the uh, A connected to B, and it says us uh, a direction of a bond. The, th the third and the most uh, precise type of adjacency matrix is a weighted adjacency matrix. In, in this type of an adjacency matrix, we have not only the connection or a direction, but also uh, this uh, bond is uh, parameterized. In, in terms of length or strength or kind or other things. And we also can parameterize uh, the nodes. Uh, another example of a receptor parameterization we might take from uh, Tim Schaffer's uh, paper, the complex with the ligand, is uh, parameterized with a graph from a group to group. You can see that the ligand is a sequence of connections, but also the uh, intramolecular uh, interface of connections is given. So the amino acids of a, of a receptor uh, is connected to, to the ligand atoms in the groups, and we can represent it as a graph. Another approach to a receptor parameterization is creation of a protein map. Another kind of adjacency matrix, in fact. The approach described in uh, Min Yan Jian in uh, 2020. So the core idea of uh, this approach is to have uh, <coughs> just a protein sequence as a FASTA. And then using some tools and preprocessing, we predict the adjacency matrix, means we predict a secondary structure of a protein, and uh, out of this adjacency matrix, we extract a graph, which is shown here. Having protein six in sequence row without coordinates, as opposed to the previous approaches, we, we first predict uh, its a secondary structure, and then extract uh, this contact map. And then we extract the protein graph uh, out of this adjacency matrix, and then uh, we featureize it with a different amino acid uh, features, such as uh, charge, um, functional groups, uh, and other things. Uh, and as a result, we have uh, this uh, graph featureized, which we use as an input uh, to the graph neural network. So imagine that finally a ligand and receptor molecules are represented as graphs containing appropriate information. And uh, what should we do now? Now we are passing it to a graph neural network, and uh, the way it works is it passes the node and edge features through a shared hidden layer with softmax activation to build atom fingerprints, which are summed to form a molecular fingerprint. And the previous atom feature vectors are calculated from each atom's uh, feature vectors and information about its neighbors. So the graph neural network are simply collects the information of a neighboring nodes and edges to each node and edge recursively until the given depth is hit. Later, the atom and uh, edge fingerprints of a particular depth is collected and it passed through a dense a layer and uh, as usually fit uh, to some property. Imagine you have a graph and you want to ha have it as a, some vectors of some particular shape. It's called embedded space. And now you think you have to uh, create something, some mapping function from a graph of a uh, arbitrary size and shape to uh, some uh, predefined uh, shape of embedding space. You want to compute the embedding for a uh, node A, and you collect the information from a neighboring nodes D, C, and B, 
but recursively. And for node D, the neighboring nodes are A and C. A and C. And uh, for node C, neighboring nodes are F, E, A, and D. F, E, D, and A. And for node B, the only neighboring node is A. So we recursively collect features from these nodes in, in such a manner. Uh, we multiply the, all the features of a appropriate node to some activation function. If, if, it, if, if the node is only one, if there are multiple nodes which we are transforming into embedded space, we do this, we're doing the same, uh, meaning multiplying the, the value of features uh, of this node per some weight matrix, and then we sum it, sum that up and average and pass through an activation function, just like in a regular uh, neural network. And then we pass this information into the, the next step of a recursion. And we do that uh, recursively until the given depth is hit. There are two general kinds of graph neural networks. Uh, convolutional, you can see to the left, and uh, recurrent, you can see to the right. Main difference between a recurrent and the convolutional graph neural networks is that uh, recurrent apply the same set of weights until a convergence criteria is met, whereas convolutional apply different weights at each iteration. So now uh, let's combine all the pieces of, of a picture together. Imagine you have a drug. You represent this drug chemical structure as a smile. So this is one of our formats. Then you change the representation of a smile into a graph in the way we discussed before. And you do the same for a target protein faster. You know the target protein uh, primary structure. Then you do a magic I explained before and extract a contact map out of that. The contact map is a simple representation of a secondary structure of this uh, target protein. And then you transform this contact map into a protein graph. Now you have two graphs for um, a ligand and for a receptor. And you pass these graphs into graph neural networks. Later you concatenate these two neural networks and uh, feed them to affinity. Now let's make the conclusions now. First, early drug discovery, which is the target of this review, usually takes something around one to three years and uh, almost $200 million with a 90% of failure. High throughput prediction of uh, drug target interactions are crucial for novel drug discovery. They allow us to shorten the list of the compounds for experimental testing. In silico means computational methods reduce time and cost of the whole process by up to 33%. And graph neural networks deliver superior accuracy for the task in a matter of milliseconds per receptor ligand pair and extend docking capabilities by accepting structures without coordinates.